And so Nasara, which is a radical law, radical, complete new foundation for the ethical and integral operation of business, individual, and government alike. It's been scheduled on the books for quite a while. For the last, last three years, it's been in development. It's actually been a law for over a year now, but not enacted. It was supposed to be enacted on September 11, but we had an accident. <laughs> so this new foundation, this new structure for having an ethical government, an ethical economic system, is in, in place. It's up here. It was, it was right in here. It was being developed, being germinated, sprouting. Going to Congress and getting passed a couple of times. Now it's being talked about more and more and more by people like me and on the internet. And as this truth is exposed, so will the truth about a new foundation be exposed. It will be fully implemented or put into effect during this time according to the Mayan calendar during the fourth day. This is November of 2005. We start the fourth night. The fourth night is always a time of the application on the, the beginning of building new structure on the new foundation. It's ruled by the god of intoxication. <laughs> Cheers. It's a pretty giddy time. Right here. It's a time of healing. After these shifts and changes, it's like a respite during that period of time. And preparation for huge breakthroughs in consciousness. Now, we have a fifth day coming up in 2006 through 2007. During the national cycle, Christ showed up right here and gave us the consciousness that we were divine. We were every bit as divine as the kings and rulers of Rome. That we didn't have to have any particular priests or kings speaking to our Creator for us. That's what Christ brought in, is that we're all sons and daughters of God. Then, during the most recent fifth day, we got E equals MC squared, the blueprint of our physical reality. And then the guy, Hubble, discovered that we lived in an infinite universe, which means that everything is possible. So during this period of time, we got the blueprint and the proof that absolutely anything and everything is possible to occur. That's a big opening for consciousness. What do you suppose this one's going to be? We're already doing teleportation. You're already experiencing telepathy daily. What kind of breakthroughs do you suppose we're going to have by 2006? Do you know that they're working on nano computers right now? A nano is a part of an electron, by the way. They're now able to program nanos in order to create molecular sized computers. 
When you team that up with the ability to, to teleport light, you get something which is way beyond our comprehension of computers right now. Infinitely fast computers that are nearly infinitely small. That we're working on right now. Funny thing. The development is happening way faster than they thought. <clears throat> These scientists in Denmark are decades ahead of where they thought they would be. These scientists in Denmark are decades ahead of where they thought they would be five years ago. They are already 25 years ahead of where they thought they'd be in five years. What does that mean? More and more is possible. Genetics. You know that they just recently did the whole map of the human gene, the, the genome, right? We have all the human DNA. You probably also heard that that happened 15 years ahead of schedule. This acceleration is for real, folks. Huge corporations are teetering and teetering and going to fall over. And it's not so much because of their ethics, although that's a big part of it right now. Research and development is the most expensive part of business. And by the time somebody has gone through the whole process of research and delivered the product to market, it's already extinct. And they have to nearly give it away. The companies can't keep up with the rate of the acceleration of consciousness because they're dealing in physical stuff. Consciousness is not physical. The possibilities in consciousness are not limited by time and space. And that, that limit of time and space is becoming less and less and less there. I want to do something with you. I want to go through this. This right here, I want to go through this about money. I mean, money's a big deal, right? All of us. I know money's a big deal to me. <laughs> here we go. Down here, what was money? Money was sharp pointy sticks and rocks. Some, you know, some hank of hair tying a rock on to make it a tool, that was exchangeable. So the medium of exchange was rocks and sharp pointy sticks. Here, we go up to cultural, and what we got is an exchange of prettier rocks. That is, gold and silver and some gems. We go up here into national, and the national consciousness we get paper money and a banking system. Paper money. Right here, during this whole thing, we built an economy of electrons. That plastic card in your back pocket, that's a bank of electrons and nothing else. You know what has happened to the medium of exchange? It's gotten less and less physical, hasn't it? Electrons are just mental. Watch the stock market. It goes up and down with how people are thinking about it. It's all electrons. 80% of all commerce is done electronically. Not with cash. So what's the next step? We have more steps here. What is going to be the medium of exchange in the future? No. It, oh, it'll still be there. But it, there is an evolution going on here. We use gold already, okay? We had that as one. 
We've gone from a physical medium of exchange to less physical, to less physical, now a mental medium of exchange. What's the next level? Spiritual exchange. And there's only one thing that spirits exchange. Admiration. They exchange particles of admiration. You can call it lots of different things. You can call it the emotion love. But what they're really doing, bottom line, is they're flowing admiration, which is all you were ever doing. How many boxes of berries is that blanket worth? As much as you admire it. How many electrons is that Corvette worth? As much as you admire it. And if you don't admire it enough, then you're going to buy a pickup truck or a Volkswagen or something else. The true value of anything to everyone is how much they admire it. And that will be the next step in our economics. How valuable is a company on Wall Street right now? How much do you admire WorldCom? So what's going to be valuable in the future? And what should you be investing in? What is admirable and nothing else? Now, if you find gold admirable, there you go, lots of people do. But you know what's going to be more admirable than anything? Your consciousness. Your truth. Your ethics and your integrity. Those are what will sustain you through any and all of these changes. In fact, we'll buoy you up so that you're not suffering through this process. Because it's those people who have their integrity, who have the courage, the ethics, to go ahead and create for yourself what you wish to experience. It's those people with integrity who will be able to take advantage of the opportunities presented by creation. And those people who do not have integrity, those people who are having to hide behind something or resist something or another, will bring upon themselves what their consciousness is focused on, their own fear. In their own judgment. That's a bitch, ain't it? <laughs> That's what's going to happen down here for sure. You've heard of Judgment Day? Well, all of this is decision time. All this is an opportunity for you to look at how things are going and make up your mind. Am I going to stay on this power train or I'm jumping off now? What? Am I going to get more ethical and more follow my own integrity or am I going to go and just hunt down that dollar? So, <clears throat> down here, by this period of time, those points of view or those consciousnesses that could not keep up with creation are extinguished. Right here. They're done. They're gone. And creation is on to new things. As a matter of fact, this is the flower. This is puberty, by the way. <laughs> Remember puberty? <laughs> it wasn't so easy, was it? It was exciting, but it wasn't so easy. There was all this change going on. I'm supposed to be like this, no, I'm not. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> that's the kind of thing that all of consciousness will be going through during this period. Here, though, is adolescence. 
here's where um, you probably got laid. <laughs> it was all worthwhile all of a sudden. <laughs> this is, well, this is when flowers, flowers are certainly having sex with birds and bees right here. And right in this period of time, there's some very wonderful things that have happened historically. Like the Renaissance in France happened during this period of time. And um, the flower children, remember flower children? <laughs> this is called This is called Renaissance. And it's ruled by the god of flowers. <clears throat> this is also during during this time. This is when King Arthur and the Round Table were around. Right here. Also, the Anasazi, the civilization of the Anasazi, this is their golden time, right here. During the sixth day was the flower of their civilization. And the Maya as well. This is when they flowered. What happens to flowers? Hmm? They die to become seed pods for a fruit, which is a seed, a seed pod. And this development during the sixth night is when the seed pod dries up and then it springs out all the seeds during the seventh day. What's going to happen here is that after this breakthrough of consciousness, after all the decision has been made on whether you are going to be part of this evolution or not, from that point on, there's no more anchor. No more this can't happen. No more this you can't do this. In fact, at this point right here, the idea of having control over any other person will be the same kind of idea as having your neighbor's kid for dinner. I mean, cooking it. <laughs> it would be this, the idea of having control over somebody else will be as foreign or adverse as that concept. And it's only from there that we can meet the neighbors. You see, we're under galactic quarantine until we get to a certain stage of ethical conduct and considerations. They can't get to us either. It's not just us on this planet, you understand? Everything in 3D, I mean the whole universe, the whole third dimensional universe is going through this at the same time. Other dimensions, more than likely, have already gone through this. It's our turn. No one else on any other planet can get to us, and we can't get to them. Because we're separated, on purpose, through the plan. You have to be ethical before you make that contact. It's sort of like you got to be 16 before you can get a driver's license. <clears throat> Here, technology will go extinct. For all intent and purposes, spirit will take over 100%. There won't be any sickness. There won't be any lack or hunger. Because spirit will be handling it all. Consciousness is already creating this whole experience. We're just not creating it as consciously as we wish. By this time, we will have all the consciousness and a lot of consciousness and be experiencing 
things much more rapidly. Knowledge and wisdom are two different things. You can know something, but once you actually use the knowledge, then you get wisdom. Some things don't work. Now you know. <laughs> We're going to be going through that, about creating stuff, stretching our wings, growing our wings. During this sixth night, by this time, the only thing that would really would be playing is the word bliss. For that 360 day period, there is going to be such a celebration of liberation and experimentation, <clears throat> getting ready for the completion. Here we have healing, the God of medicine, right there, and this is completion. The God of manifestation. seventh day, this seventh day starts in, uh, let's see, we go 2006, seven, sorry, 2008, this is 2009, this is 2010, through to 2011. There we go. I like that better. 2010. <clears throat> By the time we get to 2009, we will be in, uh, we won't necessarily be here. Because by that time, we'll have met the neighbors. And we'll be using their teleportation device to go over to visit them and then to us and back and forth. Anywhere you want to be. Anywhere. Star Trek will be like kindergarten. It better be for real. <clears throat> Here, we enter into the universal cycle. The universal cycle is the last 260 days of this 360 day period. So it's about. Uh, that much of it. And it's during that last little section, that universal cycle, that we are supposed to get up to speed to experience absolutely all of infinity within our consciousness. Now, if that doesn't fit in your brain, I understand. It's really not supposed to. Not yet. We have a lot of change to go through. But most of it is some really fun stuff. Would you like to be out of debt and never ever be in debt again? That's part of the song. Would you like to have a different kind of economy where there's only abundance? rather than control black. That's part of the application of these systems. Would you like to have the knowledge, that, the absolutely confirmed knowledge that you're divine and that everything is possible with demonstrations from other civilizations of other things that we never conceived of that are possible? That's what will happen right here. Would you like to have all of the, the, ab the complete abolition of any limit, of any consideration? Yes. That's what happens right here. Technology is a ladder to get up, you know, further and further in consciousness. The reason you guys are experiencing telepathy is because of the internet and the telephone. 
of consciousness expects to be in instant communication, and so it is. Technology is a ladder. Technology is the footprint of consciousness. But technology is going to be outpaced by consciousness right here. Then we go into, I don't know what to call it, exactly. Bliss! You know, a running start at becoming God. That's a Aren't you already up to it? <laughs> we just got to get all this junk off our backs. By the way, has anybody, uh, anybody noticed, I mean, has anybody had this feeling that stuff is falling off of you? Yes. yes. Maybe uh, jobs, <laughs> positions, uh, identities, spouses. Uh, it, stuff is just falling off. Happened to me just a couple of weeks ago, big time. Yay! Was upset at the moment. <laughs> this is this process that we're all going through. Down here, you ever heard of the eye of the needle? There it is. <laughs> there it is, right there. October 28, 2011. Eye of the needle. And the camel doesn't get through the eye of the needle. You know where that story came from, right? Uh, in ancient cities, on the camel routes, the, uh, there were lots of robbers and, and thieves and armies, and so they built the walls really big and thick and tall, and all of the doorways narrow, so that people could just charge in. So when the camel trains came, loaded, the camels loaded down, they had to unload the camel to get it through the eye of the needle. That's what's happening to all of us. We're getting unloaded. But some of the things that you're going to get unloaded from are pretty personal. Like who you thought you were. Some guys that are working in uh, industries right now are finding out that they're not a machinist. They're not a computer specialist. People are finding out more and more what they are not. Maybe this has got something to do with the progression or the evolution of consciousness. We've come a long ways by asking the questions, who are we and what are we doing here? I think it's time to start asking a new question. What am I not? I'm not my house. I'm not my second car. And now I'm not even my first car. I'm not my relationships. Lots of people are going to be finding that out either gently or not so gently. Eventually, we'll find out that indeed we are nothing. We are no thing. At which point, it's pretty easy to go through the eye of a needle. So, that's pretty much what is coming down from the Mayan perspective, from what this schedule shows and has shown us, this pattern is shown over and over again. What I'd like to do, what I really want, is I want questions. Do you guys have some questions? I cannot have explained the whole universe in two hours. Yes. about raising uh, vibrations to where you can change the cellular makeup of the body? Well, uh, actually, that all comes under more as possible. 
what you pay attention to, you become conscious of, period. So if you pay attention to raising the cellular vibration in your body, then that indeed is what will occur. Just like if you pay attention to how much toothpaste you put on the tube, you're not going to waste it. I mean, it's that literal, folks. And what has been the problem in the past is that most folks didn't believe that. That this is a co-creation. The more people think they're disempowered, the more of a drag it is on everybody. And the more individuals empower themselves, the more it liberates or lightens the load on everybody. Creation is totally on our side. Totally. Notice, there are seven days and only six nights. The deck is stacked. In our favor, there's more consciousness, more opening to consciousness, than there is any difficulty. We go from a first day all the way to a seventh day, and then go straight to a first day again. All of creation is on our side to further and further evolve consciousness into higher and more able states. <coughs> so, in eternity, infinity. Well, right now, infinity is one of those concepts which escapes consciousness. I mean, when you get close to thinking about infinity, you're then thinking about it. Hmm? Over and over? Yes, higher and higher and higher till infinity. Till no ending. Which is, you won't be there yet. We'll be getting there, and getting there, and getting there. What we got through it is in 2011. October 28, 2011 is when consciousness is scheduled to experience absolutely everything, all at the same time. Some people, individuals, will be doing that beforehand, but all of creation will be there on that schedule. It's just like if two women get pregnant on the same day, they're going to have their babies at different times. It's a natural cycle. It's not something that's like a light switch clicked on and off. Yes? Yes, now what she just said was, in nine years, will all of the power system, all the corrupt politicians, all the drug lords, all the industrialists, will they be gone? Absolutely. By natural disaster and corporate suicide. They cannot keep pace with the changes. If they can't keep pace with the changes, they will be eliminated. They'll be gone. Oh, by the way, I didn't talk about the earth changes, did I? The poles. That's the truth. You're not told about it on CNN. But scientists know that this is the truth. You're going to get told about it because more and more drastic weather is going to be happening all over the planet during this next 360 day period. As the truth comes forward, whether you want to hear it or not. Then, we have the application of the truth. The application of the truth is when the effects of the sun are going to boil over into earthquakes, volcanoes, typhoons, tsunamis, everything you can imagine. Drought. What? Drought. Drought? Doing Drought is doing it now. This is a process. Like I said, a plant doesn't grow in stages. It grows through stages. This whole thing is doing the same. This whole process is doing the same thing. It's going through a natural change by degrees, but there are stages delineated. I'm going to put that down.
So, what we have here is the majority of the earth changes. Which is a good thing because that's the only thing that's going to stop people from fighting. You're going to need something bigger than armies to stop this one. And to stop it this quickly. Otherwise, i got lots of bombs to, show, to throw, you know, i got lots of, lots of missiles. We need something bigger, faster to stop it all, which is the natural disasters. Then we'll have whole new structures, whole new mountain ranges, for Christ's sake. New foundations. Now, I'm not saying that everything and everybody's going to die. I'm not saying that the earth is going to end. It's going to change. Dramatically. It's done it many times before. On a slower process. But it's done it. Geologists, archaeologists, paleontologists, all of them know this is the truth. It's no legend that this place used to be underwater. It's not a legend. There are, you can go out and find shells in the cliffs. It's happened before. Now where are you safe? Where could you possibly be safe? Only one place in your intuition. No matter where you are, it's your intuition that guides you. If you, for whatever reason, decide not to pay attention to your intuition, talk to some of the people who have gone through disasters and hear how they made it through. Did they stop to think about it? No. They moved and they moved and they kept moving and they didn't make decisions. They knew the right thing to do. And that got them through. That's going to be the procedure through this period of time. I think that you guys already have a jump start because you're here. What's so special about here? It's safe. Why is it safe? Well, there's an indication of why it's safe. The Hopi are right up there. <laughs> there are going to be places that aren't touched much. And there are going to be places that are completely flattened, obliterated, gone, and just trashed. Like any city, for instance. If not by the military and their actions, then by the coast, which is going to be shrinking some 60 feet over this next few years. Because what you're not being told about global warming is that it's not your car. It's the sun. And there's nothing we can do about that. And if he decides to melt the, the glaciers again, which he's doing right now, and if he decides to do it quickly, which he is right now, then the water level is going to rise real fast. If you've got any coastal properties, south. <laughs> but we're going through this elimination process to get to new foundations. Yes? When will our monetary system start to fall? When will our monetary system start to fall? Uh, you weren't invested in the stock market, I take it. <laughs> Where it will totally change is right here. During the fourth day, when the SARA is actually put in as a law, well, that starts December 4th, 2004. Right at the end of 2004 and all the way through 2005, until the very end of 2005, is when that will that is scheduled to be there. Now, what that entails is we will be going back to constitutional law. Yay! 
and to a treasury. The Federal Reserve will be liquidated, along with the IRS. Actually, the IRS officially died on June 17th of 2002. It died when Bob Schultz delivered a letter, a very specific letter to the IRS, declaring that he would never again file or pay income taxes for these particular reasons. And there are many, and they are things that are decided by the Supreme Court and other federal courts over the last few years. These things make the IRS completely fraud and a crime on the public. And these facts were entered into public record. So now they're your evidence too. And the IRS cannot prosecute anyone for not filing. They're dead. <laughs> they had to go sometime. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, the question was, it seems like ancient civilizations had higher consciousness than we do now. And um, I'm going to use a consciousness that, that is pretty, it's local, uh, the American Indians. Okay, the American Indians had a consciousness which some could say was higher than ours. Because they lived in harmony with nature. The Maya had a similar thing. They lived very much as one with creation. Sort of like what you were at four days old, six months old, 13 months old. You were suckling at your mother's breast. And your consciousness was very bright. But you were suckling and suckling. And what would have happened if you were never removed from your mother's breast? You wouldn't have evolved. What happened to the American Indians is basically everyone but the Hopi, and maybe the Anasazi before then, had a religion that nothing shall change. Tradition is everything. The ancestors are your lords, and you will live by these passed down tenets. Well, change came. And they were removed from the breast of Mother Nature. And they had a hissy fit for quite a few years. Now, their consciousness, the consciousness of the American Indian, is integrated itself into our society. Are they profiting? Most Indian tribesmen now are the most popular, most powerful men in their states. And in Canada, they are more powerful than a Canadian citizen. They have more volition. They're helping their people. They're educating themselves. And they're keeping track of a whole lot more than how many feathers are on that turkey or when are the cattle going, when are the buffalo going to migrate through here. Their consciousness has sped to where it's now keeping up with creation. They adapted. They came on online. And they're doing a lot of good. I wanted to point out something about ethics and power. Right now, they're opposed. Ethics and power. Bam! It's a collision. Once the collision is over, by the way, the ethics train, not a thing, not a scratch is going to be on the ethics train. The power train is going to be laid in pieces everywhere. But, you know, you can't have ethics unless you have power. You can't 
be an assistance to the continued survival of anything unless you have some power. My definition of ethics is the deft application of power. Using the right amount. Not too much, not too little. Using what is appropriate for the situation to benefit all. I mean, think about it. A piece of big old blob of kelp laying on the beach somewhere is not going to be able to affect the ethical situation on the Why? It has no power. On the other hand, let's say that a major network, a major broadcast organization decided that for their own survival, they had to become totally ethical and report only with integrity. Now suppose that happened. They already have the power, don't they? If it's applied in the right way, if it's applied in an appropriate fashion, they can make everything more ethical, everything more integral for all of us. This is going to happen. As a matter of fact, it already is. Watch the news. Don't watch the news for who died and who killed that person. Watch the news for what are these people presenting about ethics and integrity. And you will enjoy the show. Because you'll see more and more and more of it. And demands on everyone to be more in, more in ethics. Questions? More questions? Yes. Okay. Yes. What's the nations are you getting on all this? Are you counting that? What's that again? What dimensions are you getting? Oh, oh this? okay. Only the third. The, the question was, which dimensions are we counting in this? Only the third dimension. This is only 3D. All of it, all of 3D, but only 3D. Other dimensions aren't part of this. Other dimensions don't have the limitation of time and space. Remember that location of your consciousness? Your, your considerations of time and place is where you're at? Other dimensions don't have that. That's a limitation. It's your subscription to 3D like you would get a magazine. You know, you subscribe to, to popular science or field and stream. Well, we're subscribing our, to 3D. Another question? Hey. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Well, actually, it's already happening. Um, right now, <clears throat> in 1999, we received an answer to a, a communication we sent out uh, into, the, into the universe in 1974. Do you hear about that? Or you see that, that crop circle that's an answer? It's a digital printout of the binary code message that we sent out into space. OK. Happened in, in, in the year 2000, right here in the middle of, of the first day. Since then, we've gotten more and more communications. Communications that, frankly, can be ignored. If you don't want to pay attention to it, it's not a big deal. It's not like the aliens are putting up billboards on the side of the buildings. They're doing it on crops. And just recently, as a matter of fact, uh, in, yeah, the 15th, the 15th of this month, there was a huge picture of an alien and then a, a mandala type thing that was laid down on August 15th this year. Huge. It's on the internet. Go check it out. Uh, they are in communication right now. 
but in such a way as they can be totally ignored if you so desire. It's not intrusive. And I don't believe that these guys are from the other planets. I believe they're from other dimensions. Now, <clears throat> by the time we get through into here, down into, into this formation here, these new foundations are going to include embellishments on our ability to see and communicate with our neighbors. This, this is where we'll start to actually find other life on other planets, part of our new foundation of understanding. Then, during this period of time, or at, just after this period of time, is when we'll meet other galactic citizens. And it won't be long after that before we're meeting other citizens from other galaxies as well. That'll be down in here, when we surpass technology and we're way past, in consciousness, any of the limits of time and space, which is, what's the limit between us being here and being in a different galaxy? What's the only barrier? Your consideration that is impossible. That's the only barrier. Once that's gone, you can be there. So, right in here, 2006 to 2007, is when we'll actually be shaking hands with somebody from a different planet. Yes? actually occurs from here in a major way. What the question was, when do we go from third to fourth to fifth dimension? And from fifth, who knows? We're kind of in a bad perspective to look at higher dimensions. You know? It's way down here. It's like a little kid trying to see what's on top of the shelf, you know? You know something's up there, but you can't quite... <clears throat> from here, from here, our technological advances and our conscious advances will lead us to understand other dimensions, even if we can't get there. But from here on, from, from this place on, people will be flitting in and out of them until here, the, by the time we go through 2011, we'll have all that freedom for any of for dimensions other than the third. We're already going through the fourth. The fourth dimension is time. And we're going through time right now. We're wasting time. We're just racing through it. More and more creation happening in less and less time. The space is a consideration that will fail right here. By the time we get down here, 2008, there will be a, so many holes punched through by consciousness into other dimensions, that the consideration that they don't exist will evaporate. It's sort of like Columbus wasn't the only person who thought the world was round. There were maps, for Christ's sake. He had one. He was following it. But most of the world thought the most of people thought the world was flat. Until there were experiments and there were there were exhibitions and there were expeditions that came back alive and just blew holes in the fact that the Earth was flat. That's the same kind of thing that will be happening right here, during that sixth day. But it is not going to be an instant thing. It's not like you can just go in and punch into the fourth and fifth dimension, you know? It's, it's not like that. It's a process. Another question? Well, the reason there's so many books out there about this is because, folks, this is a migration. Think of yourself as a big bull elk or something, you know? And it's time to go eat grass down in the valley. And we're all going that way. That's what's happening to consciousness. It's all moving, moving toward more and more possibility moving toward more and more personal responsibility, moving more and more and more to ethical 
and integral styles. killing some former women for being witches and your intuition was turned on but as a matter of fact you know what a gyroscope is it's like that right it's a, a gyroscope and it's got a thing like that and here this is a center, that's a center, like the axle. You know, peace of mind, peace of mind, only comes when a person is centered. Is that right? Think about your own experience. When you are personally centered, you have peace of mind. Have you ever had peace of mind when you weren't centered? I doubt it. Centeredness is a prerequisite for having peace of mind. So how do you get centered? With certainty. When you're certain about something, then you're centered. If you're uncertain about something, then you're upset and not centered, right? So. How does one get certainty? There's only one source. The recognition of patterns. When you recognize the pattern, now you're certain that it's going to happen again. Or it will work this way. You learn to drive that way. When you first got behind the wheel, you didn't have peace of mind. You weren't centered. You weren't certain because you didn't know the patterns. Now you know the patterns of traffic and the habits, which are also patterns of stupid drivers. <laughs> so you can have more peace of mind behind the wheel. Now, this gyroscope has a center. But a gyroscope works on the principle of the more motion around that center, the more stable it is. Hmm. So as creation presents more and more change all around you, if you are stable, if you are centered, you're going to become more and more stable rather than more and more out of control. Does that make sense? So the more you recognize the pattern of creation and the pattern of all these changes just from tonight's talk, I mean, okay, now, we're almost to this stage right now. So let's say in December, just after the elections, or actually it's going to be during the elections and all the accusations and all the truth being splattered on each other. But then after that, all this torrent of truth starts coming out about things you wished you weren't hearing. You're going to remember this talk. And you're going to go, my God. This really is happening. I'm recognizing this pattern right now. And you know what? You'll have more peace of mind. Because this will already be starting to work. And the faster and the faster things change around you, the more stable you will get. 
the more empowered you will be to help others. And that's the real purpose for all this information. All those things that get spun off real fast. <laughs> yeah. So you know what? I want to thank you all very much for coming. And next, I want to uh, make a, a request. And that is, that if you found some value or some validity in your own experience to what we were talking about, please help us spread this information. This information is not going to do this little group of people any good whatsoever. As we watch everyone else go just off their nut, it won't be any fun at all. But if there's any way that you can contact someone who has some admired opinion and make a connection to, so that we can get to these people and get down to even more brassy tacks than we went over tonight, prove this scientifically. The more people we can get this to over the airwaves, over television, through movies, through other books, the faster we can get it out, the better for everyone. I've been doing this for two years, and Madeline's been with me for the last year. And we've been doing this and enjoying this very much. But we can see that the pace at which things are changing is not exactly the pace that we're reaching people. And it's going to take you guys helping us out. Help yourself out. And the books are right back here. I mean, you want some more proof? We got it all. It's all written down. You have to read it, but it's all there. This is, this is not some scheme other than on the part of God. <laughs> but, you know, please, avail yourself of the information. Please. And then turn somebody else on to it. The tapes that we're making tonight will be for sale in another couple of weeks. We request that if you buy a tape, you show it to a group of people, you ask those people who in the group would show it to others, and you make them a copy and you give it to them. <laughs> Tapes will be ready in about a month. A month? Yeah, two weeks to but a keep, month. Keep checking the website, because as soon as they're complete, they will be up on the website for purchase. And once you, like I said, once you buy one, have it copied as many times as it'll copy. Okay? How much are the books? The books, 25 bucks. $25. They're 24 at uh, Amazon.com. We charge you five cents for delivery. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, I've been on the Art Bell Show. Yeah. And I'm emailing people all the time. But you understand, I mean, you guys understand, how many talks could you go to this month? Oh, my God. Just here, you know? Imagine being Art Bell. He's got a stack this high of emails and faxes of please listen to my message. And every one of these guys, this of any value at all, is in a blizzard of messages. There's only one way this will get through. And that's by enough people talking about it. Better for sale tonight? We'll wrap one for you. No, there's no donation. Uh, you guys already paid attention. That's enough. <laughs>